Hey everyone, in this beginner's iClone tutorial, we're going to cover the basics of the user interface and how to navigate in the viewport. Let's start by looking at the top menu. File will probably be the most common menu item at the top and contains all of the universal items you'll see in most 3D programs. Beside that is the edit menu where you'll find project settings. Project settings contains the most important settings in your project. To collapse or expand the sections, use Ctrl, minus, or plus. Here you can set major parameters like the length of your project or the background color. There is also the preference menu item that allows you to customize various aspects of your workspace according to your preferences. This includes real-time render options that allow you to set your viewport render quality according to the performance of your machine. This setting only influences the real-time environment and doesn't affect the end rendered result. The Create menu is a convenient place where you can find all sorts of different objects to add to your scene, from primitive shapes to lights and cameras. Modify contains a number of different options for modifying your character or other scene objects once they are selected. It also contains the toggle options for soft and rigid body physics. You can toggle these off if you don't need them to speed up real-time performance. Animation is one place where you can find all of the main animation tools as well as some additional motion editing options. Render is where you'll find your various export options including image sequences and video. The View menu is all about viewport navigation which will be discussed later. Under Window, you'll find the main tool windows along with their hotkeys. There is also a workspace submenu with some layouts for various workflows. For example, the animation workspace will contain all of the essential windows for an animation workflow, including the animation layer editor, curve editor, and timeline. All windows can be moved, docked, and resized. There are also plugin and script where you'll find the relevant plugins and Python scripts you acquired. Lots of learning resources can be found in the help menu, including the manual and video tutorials, as well as a link to the feedback form and the different stores where you can find other content and software. Okay, next let's look at the toolbar right underneath the top menu where you can easily access a number of important features. Starting from the left, the first section is where you can create, save, and load a project. Beside that are some common export options, including to USD format. The second section has a number of common transform, link, align, and visibility options. The third section contains the main camera functions, which we'll look at a bit later. The last two sections are about global illumination, and finally physics options at the end. Below the first toolbar row here, you'll find the main options for the motion director that is great for live animation and crowd simulation. Please check out the dedicated tutorial for more on how to use this innovative tool. You can toggle the visibility of any of the toolbar sets from the window menu and click and drag the green line to change their order. Okay, let's move on to the camera tools and viewport navigation. On the toolbar, you can toggle the mini viewport, which can be useful if you want to look at the same scene from two perspectives simultaneously. This can also be docked and resized, and you can select the desired camera from the drop down menu. Auxiliary light is a good option to use when you're not so much concerned about the lighting in your scene. It will give a flat, even lighting environment that will save system resources that would otherwise be used for lighting and shadows. Home will snap the camera to a 45 degree perspective of the selected object at a default zoom level. If you choose center from the drop down, it will snap to the same 45 degree view at your previous zoom level. Next are the standard camera tools. You will use these a lot, so it's recommended to become familiar with the hotkeys and mouse shortcuts to move your camera around. First is the zoom with hotkey Z. Next is pan with hotkey X. 
Finally, you have Orbit with Hotkey C. However, your cursor will often be toggled to something else like Select. In this case, there are more useful shortcuts for camera navigation. You can zoom by either scrolling your mouse wheel or holding Alt and both mouse keys then dragging. And holding Alt and left mouse button will pan. Holding Alt and the right mouse button is the same as orbiting. There is also a list of camera presets in a drop-down with the relevant hotkey listed as well. J is a common hotkey that will snap to your character's face to prepare for facial animation. Beside that, you'll find a list of cameras you have added, including the preview camera. The preview camera is the only camera that cannot be animated and is very useful for navigating to different perspectives at different frames when you don't want the movement recorded. Probably one of the most useful features is the camera and object switch. You can activate this with the U hotkey, and it will automatically toggle between the last selected object and camera. This is very useful when adjusting the properties for each in the modify panel. Finally, there is a drop down list for render detail level, which you can also find in preferences. This only determines the view settings in the viewport and does not affect the final rendered result. You can use a lower level of detail here to free up more system resources while you're working. Okay, lastly, let's look at the standard workspace panels. The content manager is where you'll find all of your content, including everything from characters and props to lighting presets and tons of other resources. These are all categorized along the top of the content manager and also listed below. You can find tons of free resources here and also organize your view by individual item or pack. The custom tab is where you can save your own custom assets. Just select your asset and then use the save button at the bottom. The scene manager is also very important. Here you'll find a list of everything that's in your scene, including cameras, lights, characters, props, and more. You can also set a number of conditions on your various assets here. You'll also find a visual panel that is used to adjust and tweak the various properties such as shadows, lighting effects, and global illumination. When you have an object selected in your scene, the modify panel will change to show the attributes of that object. Different object types will populate the modify panel with different parameters. For example, with a character we have attributes, animation, materials, as well as wrinkle and physics settings. Props, cameras, and other objects like lights will show different parameters here. At the bottom, you can see a play bar which shows the progress through the timeline. You can click and drag the slider here to preview the animation at your own pace and also play back. There are also your standard playback controls, which will take you to various points in the timeline, as well as a loop option. You can toggle voice and music audio on and off, and also manually enter in a frame you'd like to go to in the appropriate field. There are also shortcuts for project settings and the timeline. The timeline is a whole separate topic, which we have a dedicated tutorial for. That's it for this basic tutorial, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.